Still on our panel ARDL estimation series, I will encourage you to watch these prerequisite videos before you watch this one. Make sure you know how to reshape your data from wide to long. Make sure you understand the tips to building a panel data. Most importantly, you must know the basics of panel ARDL. And make sure you watch the video on panel ARDL estimations steps 1 to 4. Because this video will cover steps 5 to 7. Under steps 1 to 4, I showed you how to specify the model. I showed you how to conduct descriptive or summary statistics. I showed you how to perform correlation analysis and also how to perform the IPS unit rule test. Like I said, I'm not going to make available the data I'm using for this tutorial because it is still a classified data, but the do file is available for you on my website. This tutorial will cover step five, optimal lag selection, step six, even though step six is optional, I will still show you how to perform the Pedroni co-integration test. And lastly, we'll cover the Husband test. So for step five, we are going to check for the optimal lag length for the model and for the variables. The code I'm using was sent to me by uh, Anna Cheknek from Gangurian University in Tel Aviv. She was gracious enough to forward this code to me and I'm so grateful. And I've also made this code available to so many people who need it and it is also on my website. So to perform the optimal lag, this is the code I'm going to run. These are the variables, GDP growth rate, DCF, expenditure and trade. The CID is the country ID and I'm using a maximum lag of two. You can also use a maximum lag of one if you don't want to lose too many degrees of freedom. But I'm using two just for this example. Stata default lag is BIC but if you want to have um, the AIC information criterion all you need to do is to type AIC here and the information criterion you are going to be having will be the AIC. But I would prefer the BIC so I'm sticking with the default lag. So I'm highlighting all these and I'll run it. So here we have the codes coming up for each of the 10 countries in the sample. And I will show you how you are going to choose the optimal lag to run the model. We have 10 countries in this sample. So we are going to have 10 different codes for each of the four variables. So let me quickly go back to country one and just run through. So recall this is the code that we executed. And this result is for country one where you have two lags for GDP growth rate, zero for DCF, zero for expenditure, and zero for trade. And you have the same for country two. You have the lag length for the variables here. And on and on you have for all the 10 countries. So the question now is deciding the lag length for the model, since we are running a panel data analysis. Choosing the lag length is very simple. All you have to do is to choose the most common lag across the countries. And for GDP growth rate, the most common lag is one. For DCF, the most common lag is zero. For expenditure, the most common lag is zero. And for trade openness, the most common lag is zero. I have it all spelled out neatly in PowerPoint. So here you can see for optimal lag length, for GDP growth rate is one, DCF is zero, expenditure is zero, trade openness is zero. This is because these are the most common lags among the 10 countries. So you are using the most common lag for each variable to represent the lag for the model. And again, I have placed it here, the code that I executed. This is the code. Again, the do file is available on my website, but the data will not be available for you to use. So load your own data and use my do file to run your analysis. Let's move now to step six. Step six is to perform co-integration tests, even though it is optional. So if you have a strongly balanced data, you can run the XT Pedroni, which I have here. This is the code. I've highlighted it and I'm going to run. So here we have the result for the Pedroni's co-integration test, where we have seven statistics, V, Rho, T, and ADF. If you count all these statistics, there are seven in number. And out of the seven statistics, six shows that the null hypothesis of no co-integration is rejected even at the 1% level. Because in absolute terms, these figures are greater than 2. So we can confidently say that our panel exhibits co-integration among the variable. But again, I said it, you can skip performing the Pedroni test. You can skip it. 
and I'll tell you why. Let's move now to PowerPoint. So here is our result. I showed you just now from Stata. This is it. And the null hypothesis of no co-integration is rejected even at the 1% level for panel and group statistics. You can see that in absolute terms, these figures are greater than 2. I said it here that if you are assuming long-run homogeneity, you can skip this test. Co-integration is ascertained from the statistical significance of the long-run coefficients and the error correction term. Essentially, co-integration, or more generally, a long-run relationship presents itself as a joint significance of the levels equation. So that means that by performing the PMG analysis, you can infer co-integration from the statistical significance of the long-run coefficients and the error correction term. So again, you can skip this. If you go through so many papers that use the PMG analysis, some of them did not perform co-integration. So this is not totally necessary. Let's move now to step seven. Step seven is to determine which estimator is most appropriate to run the test. Is it the pooled main group or is it the main group? So here is the code. I'm going to highlight both. If you look at it here, you have the MG, you have the PMG, and you have the Hosman test. So I'm going to execute this. We are only interested in the outcome of the Hosman test and remember our decision criteria, if the probability value is greater than 0.05, you cannot reject the null hypothesis, which shows that PMG is the most efficient estimator under the null. So given the p-value of 0.7320, we are going to use the PMG estimator to analyze our panel data. So here... Just like I showed you in Stata, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that the pooled main group is a more efficient estimator under the null, under the hypothesis of um, homogeneity, slope homogeneity. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, I'm going to use the PMG estimator to analyze this model. But what if you want to decide between PMG and the dynamic fixed effects estimator? Is the same approach. Let's go back to Stata. This is the command you have to run. You have the DFE here and you have the PMG and you have the Husband test. So highlight both. Highlight also the Husband test and let's run it. So again, we are only interested in the outcome of the Husband test and always remember the decision criteria. Between the pooled main group and the DFE estimator, once the p value is higher than 0.05, you cannot reject the null hypothesis, which implies that PMG is a better and more efficient estimator under the null. So this one also shows that we are using the PMG to estimate the model. So you can see here, under the null hypothesis of homogeneity, in choosing between the DFE and pooled main group, the model supports the PMG, given the p-value of 0.9991. So the null hypothesis of homogeneity cannot be rejected. So that also concludes this video from steps 5 to 7. If you are undergoing any study using the panel ARDL estimator, I will encourage you to follow those steps I've indicated in this tutorial. My next video will cover estimating the model. Please read up these references. These papers are very simple and interesting to read. It will give you better understanding and more detailed approaches to estimating panel ARDL. Thank you for staying with me. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Share my videos and my links if you have enjoyed my tutorials to your students, to your colleagues, and to your cohorts. Don't go away. The next video will be a detailed hands-on tutorial on how you can estimate the panel ARDL model.